The following is a build that is completely theoretical that only looks at card interactions and how it counters certain aspects of your local. This deck has not been playtested and should only be viewed as a starting point before making adjustments for your personal style and meta. Only a few more weeks until the ban of Mega Digimon Fusion and restrictions to Ice Wall and Reinforced Memory Boost. For today's build, I was originally going to go over a purple Crest Garurumon win rate deck. But after reading through card effects, let's be real, Tidemon is superior in this category, which I'll go over in this video. Tidemon Aggro is a theoretical build that I've been thinking of. I do think Lilithmon Loop will continue seeing some play with some innovation, but because there's so many of these types of decks already around, I want to focus on a different variety of purple. As always, I'll go through the card by card, the strengths, the weaknesses, and a combo or two. This deck runs 5 level 2s, 13 level 3s, 11 level 4s, 7 level 5s, 6 level 6s, 3 level 7s, 7 option cards, and 3 tamers. For this deck profile, I'll also point out the 1 tech options. For level 2s, this deck runs 1 Demi Merrimon and 1 Sunomon. Demi Merrimon is the secondary egg of this build, mainly because there are so many discarding effects that you want to use Sunomon to get your draws. Sunomon allows you to draw a card when you trash a card from your hand. Because of this, you'll be constantly digging for answers for your opponent's plays. For level 3s, this deck runs 13 level 3s in the form of 3 Candlemon, 3 Gazimon, 3 Labramon, and 4 starter deck Gabumon. The primary focus of your rookies is to discard as often as you can and be as cheap as you can. With Candlemon, or Demi Devimon, this Digimon is your cheap 2 cost body to just play for choking your opponent, or Evo into for 0 memory. Gazimon is absolutely a must for preventing the memory gain from blue decks and Lilith Loop. Labramon for the draw and trash, and triggering even Sunomon if it's already out from the raise, and Gabumon for the draw and pitch for the majority of your effects, not to mention cycling. There's not a whole lot to change up here, mainly because purple has one of the tightest deck spaces to go with. If anything, you could adjust the ratios of each of these, though I highly suggest Gazimon at a minimum of 2 for the memory block game. For level 4s, this deck runs 2 Viomon, 3 Kinkakumon, 3 Ginkakumon, and 3 Ginkakumon Promote. Viomon is your blocker that doesn't get hit by Jessmon, but the blockers in general are still iffy this format, with Gabumon Bond of Friendship and Agumon Bond of Bravery running amok. The last of the champions are Kinkakumon, Ginkakumon, and Ginkakumon Promote. This package is the epitome of what made Lilith Loop one of the most insane decks in Nationals. For this package, we're utilizing it for extra cheeky swings when we can, which I'll cover in the combos. With King Kakumon, when the Digimon above it attacks, you can trash a card, then nuke a rookie. A great option against Agubond and Gabubond decks. With Gin Kakumon, whenever you trash a card, you can gain one memory. And Gin Kakumon Promote, which has a lot of tricks, you can do with it. The main thing is you can bring it back and stack the Kinkaku and Ginkaku underneath it to gain a memory and draw a card if they were in the trash. For this lineup, I consider dropping one Biomon and just throwing in the fourth Promote. But in a meta with so much Rookie Rush-esque decks, chipping at security, even playing a blocker can be your saving grace. For level 5s, this deck runs 7 level 5s in the form of 4 Lady Devimon, 2 Rebellimon, and 1 Skull Greymon. With Lady Devimon, this is the MVP of purple builds, allowing you to basically draw not just for one evolution, but two more cards to trash one. This unbricks hands and even sets up the trash. For Rebellimon, you can convert a level 4 into a blocker retaliator for one turn if you need to. And, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived to the first one tech card. Skull Greymon is a trash target in your hand that can constantly convert your lowly rookies or even your blockers into retaliators. Doesn't matter how big the enemy is, if they just want to die too. For level 6s, this deck runs 2 Mastimon and 4 Titamon. Mastimon is your secondary mega for this deck, because of the fact that she can not only bring back Ginkakumon Promote for game enders, but is the counter for security control. Just be careful when you evo in her, because that in itself can end you. Titamon is your heavy hitter of the deck, where when you trash a card that turn, you can give it plus 2000 DP and security check plus 1. While Kreskarurumon does get the plus 1 security check, 
Tidemon effectively also comes with the potential, bringing back either a blocker or a promote for another swing. While Lilithmon could be another addition to this build, I wanted to build a more purple aggro variant post-Nationals. And in terms of playability, this can also see some play in the BT7 meta. For level 7s, I run 1 Omnimon Zwart and 2 Omnimon Zwart Defeat. Omnimon Zwart is the second 1 card tech in the deck. Functionally, it can set up for aggro next turn, or it could be the game ender. After all, on evolution you can bring back not 1, but 2 bodies that cost 8 or less. That's not 8 total by the way, but 8 each. And while Omnimon's Wart was previously extremely useful, with Mega Digimon Fusion leaving us in a few short weeks, it's time to get used to not having it at full power. Instead, it's time to focus on Omnimon's Wart Defeat for the Tamer Destruction. Not only can Zwart Defeat pop out of security if it's checked in the security for an extra body, but if you manage to place Skull Greymon underneath him, you can swing into bigger bodies and make it a 2 for 1. For option cards, this deck runs 1 Glaive Memory Boost, 2 Underworld Call, 3 Win Rate 60%, and 1 Emergency Program Halt. With another 1 card tech, Glaive Memory Boost serves as an option card for if I need the delayed memory for later. Underworld Call is the second MVP of the option cards, that provides you with both defense and offense. When checked in the security, you can revive a blocker or a Digimon that can potentially put it to your turn. Win rate 60%, the new Mega Digimon Fusion converts a lot of your 4 cost Digimon into 2 cost Digimon, and your Omnimon's Wart into a 4 cost. The one copy of Emergency Program Halt is to counteract security control. After you Evo into your Titamon, if you manage to keep it to your turn, and have a white source out, play this to prevent your opponent from blowing your Digimon up. Finally, three Tamers with one Matt Ishida and two Analog Youth. Matt Ishida I felt would be necessary to bring back any of your purple cards for extra benefits. But honestly, this card could be substituted with Manoa Bellucci if needed. Analog Youth is the MVP Tamer of purple and Machine Dramon builds for the discard effect. By revealing the top three, you can add one Digimon card and trash the rest. While effective for grabbing cards like Omnimon or Titamon, this does trash the option cards that could help you during the game. But besides that, if your Titamon gets nuked by an option card, you can immediately raise a new egg and gain a memory. Sequencing your eggs and swinging at the right times can be a game changer. For strengths, this deck has some aggressive strategy, while also not bum rushing a deck out like previous Lilithmon loop decks. There are defensive strategies when you need to play the long game, and very explosive plays, to make the game short. For weaknesses, this deck has your typical problems against security control threats. With Emergency Program Halt as a tech, you can avoid those matchups, but overall I think the main issues with this deck is skill ceiling. While some decks you can pretty much play the same combo over and over again, purple in my mind has always been a you might have the same endgame combo, but how you get there is always going to change based on what you've trashed and what's left in deck. For combos, you'll want to set up that level 5 before slapping that Titamon down. At 3 memory, you'll only pass 1 memory. But if you happen to have win rate, you can play win rate to Evo into Titamon for an evolution cost of 2. If you had the Mad Ishida out, this puts your memory to 1. Triggering all of Titamon's effects, you can play a level 4 or lower from your trash. If Ginkakumon Promote happens to be your victim, you can add the other 2 pieces to gain a memory and draw a card. That's 3 checks right there if your Titamon survives. Mastamon is also another option that can dodge that last security check and bring the Promote to do the same thing. Titamon Aggro is an interesting deck that I haven't played much, but seeing it and Mastamon in action in some of the top 8 decks, I wanted to do a focus on the aggressive nature of purple. What are your thoughts on this purple aggro build? And what's the viability of it for BT7 with Omnimon's Word Defeat as an option to remove tamers? Let me know in the comments below. This is Digipanda. Logging out.